right, guys, so update. Um, so two races done, and on both of those races, we struggled with um, water temperatures, engine overheating, um, and in both, in, in all of those races, we needed to manage temperatures by, by short shifting and keeping the revs down. So under normal daily driving conditions, you would definitely not pick up an issue, but when you're driving really hard, um, flat out, and um, using the, the complete rev range, uh, the car is now um, able to rev to 7,000, though we, we seldom do that, uh, but even revving through to six uh, caused a problem. So you could get two or three hot laps, uh, after which um, at, at certain parts on the track you would need to shift as low as five, five and a half thousand, uh, just to make sure that you could keep the temperatures down. Uh, we got temperatures up to about 114, 160 degrees. Remember that's measured on the cylinder head, it's not water temperatures. Um, and at that point, the gauge then does start to move. Uh, we didn't wait for things to get to the red. We managed things just off the, off the center position. So um, what did we do about this? Uh, after the first race, we assumed we were losing a lot of airflow over the radiator. So we installed the splitter. Uh, we reinstalled the, uh, the standard plastic um, duct, which channels air over the radiator. And we also relocated the oil cooler, which we had fitted in front of the radiator thinking that that was obviously passing warmer air onto the radio. So we actually moved the oil cooler up that it actually sat right behind the bumper stiffener and was out of the, of the prime airflow. Despite that, we still had issues. So um, we, we increased our dosage on, this, on the Saturday morning of the, uh, of the Mo Cool, which is a Motul product, a coolant enhancer. Uh, we're not allowed to run any, uh, any glycol um, antifreeze in, in, in the racing car. Um, and despite uh, running a really nice rich, rich mixture of that, we still struggled with that throughout the race day. So um, when we got back, uh, we decided to strip the cooling system down. We are replacing the expansion bottle, uh, but that was simply because we were uh, experiencing a problem that the expansion bottle was no longer indicating water level, it told us water level was low all the time, and we had diagnosed that to be an internal problem in the expansion bottle, which triggers a read switch um, on a sensor. Um, so we got a new expansion bottle. Uh, we pulled the water pump out and have examined that. We can't recall when this was replaced, but it really looks great. It's new. There's absolutely no signs of wear or even discoloration on the pump. Um, beautiful and smooth. The bearings are nice and tight. No issues there at all. It's, it's rock solid. So no issues with the water pump. Um, pulled the radiator out. Um, it's also relatively new. We flushed that. Put a little bit of sediment out, but really nothing to, to be excited about. Um, and the last thing that we decided to do was back out our thermostat modification. We had gutted the thermostat housing, removed the thermostat, installed a welch plug in the block to force the water pump to circulate um, water immediately through the radiator, radiator and through the block. So it would never have a short circuit uh, process to the engine. And, and it would result in an extended warm up, but would eliminate the thermostat roll, uh, which does mean uh, thermostat failures perhaps. Uh, that could be avoided, uh, but also just that restriction of the thermostat. We decided that it was probably not terribly clever to do that, so we decided to back that out, so we've got a brand new thermostat uh, housing and thermostat, which we're going to put back in, and we've got the wells plug out. So, once we uh, took the water pump out to inspect it, we had a look at the front uh, timing case cover. That sits on the front of the engine just like that, and your water pump puts in over here. Um, and your crank comes through this hole over here. And what we saw really did alarm us because there is a huge amount of erosion of the surface of the, um, of the timing case cover in the area that the water pump goes in. So if you'd like to have a little closer look, we'll have a little peek at what that is. So what we saw from the outside um, is really, you know, it looks a little bit like Swiss cheese. Um, or that somebody's been shooting at it with a BB gun. So massive chunks of metal kind of eroded away. Um, and, you know, the initial uh, thought is, well, could this be some kind of mechanical erosion? But it becomes, the closer you examine, it becomes very clear. This is not mechanical erosion. What you believe this is, is actually cavitation of the pump. Um, and you will see that it's, it's really worn a uh, massive amount of material away. And over here is probably a very obvious space as well, where you can see probably four or five millimeter in depth um, has, has been eroded away from this edge. So, you know, how does this contribute to, to cooling issue? Well, we'll show you with the, uh, with the water pump installed back in here why this is a problem. Right, so we've just pumped, uh, popped the, uh, the water pump back into the timing cover. If you come and have a look at how the water pump sits on the inside of the timing cover, it becomes apparent why we've got an issue. Now the way any pump works is you've got a low pressure side and you've got a high pressure side. The low pressure side is where the water comes into the pump and the high pressure side is where it pushes it out. And those two have to be separated from one another, effectively sealed. So water comes in from the head, 
through these two top holes and comes in behind the impeller at the back comes in into the side of the impeller and with the impeller spinning it spins the water to the outside and forces it into the rest of the engine so this part of the water pump area is the high pressure side and the section at the back which you can't see now is the low pressure side and as i say they have to be sealed from one another now if you have a look up close you will see that the gap around the section of the pump which is not badly damaged is very small it's probably of the order of half a millimeter um, and and if you get the water pump out you'll see that there's a nice wide flange with two lips on it uh, it's what you would call a gland um, and that results in a pressure drop across um, that gap um, and becomes quite an effective seal when the uh, when the water pump is spinning but if you come and have a closer look at the section which is damaged you will see massive gaps between the edge of the water pump and the, the, the housing where we've lost all of this material. And effectively what that does is it just breaks the seal between the high pressure side and the low pressure side. So as the water pump is spinning, it will start to drive some of that pressure onto the low pressure side of the pump. And it effectively results in a very ineffective uh, circulation um, and a, a low pressure situation. So we've never, we, we've Googled this specifically. I, I, I Googled, um, cavitation or you know BMW um, uh, water pumps um, and a couple of other search terms couldn't find anything like this so we, we we're quite sure that this problem is unlikely to be unique to this car it's um, you know these, these M54 motors are absolutely prolific um, so uh, we expect that there are other cars that suffer from this um, and yet all of the discussions around overheat issues in M54s and um, they're very common I mean M the M50 family M50, M52, M54 everybody knows about having to replace various components of the cooling system at regular intervals but nobody's spoken about this issue so this may be something which is overlooked um, if you pull your water pump out you see a bit of er uh, pitting and erosion the penny may not drop in terms of what that really means for the motor so um, be aware that there is one more uh, potential pitfall um, pardon the pun, um, in terms of what can cause um, overheating problems in the M54. So we'll be picking up a new timing case cover tomorrow. We'll get it in and uh, we're absolutely confident that this is going to resolve our issue. So yeah, stay tuned and we're glad we could uh, find something which can hopefully help somebody else.